Good morning, everyone. At least it's morning when I'm recording this. So this um, is an unusual situation here where I've been asked to uh, move this class online, which you already know because I sent an announcement about it. So it's, it's not like <clears throat> this is a surprise. So we are, as the announcement states here, we are going online. Uh, you'll get a notice from the school soon, I was told, but this is per the provost. And so this actually stinks because we don't get to see each other face to face because I'm a little disappointed because this was like a really nice group of people and I had um, good experiences with the class so far. So it's a little bit of a bummer that we don't get to see each other for the rest of the semester, but you, I will still be recording uh, videos for the class and walking you through. And, in, and for the last two years, I've been teaching this class online anyway, so it's not that much of a hardship for me, which it might be for some of your other professors who've never taught online. But you're in good hands with me because, as some of you already know, because I know you've been in my other classes, uh, it's sort of my expertise teaching online. So anyway, how is, you probably have questions about how is this going to work. So I have a note here, what I want to discuss today, which I was going to discuss <clears throat> tonight in class, <clears throat> was uh, I want to discuss the second test that we're going to, you're going to be taking after spring break. So we, we want to, I want to discuss how that's going to work and give you some feedback on that. And then also talk about your, your, the assignments coming up and what you should be doing for the class. And just because the class is online, um, you have to be a little bit more diligent to make sure that you don't miss any of the due dates on the homeworks. I am very um, um, strict about not accepting any late assignments for any of my classes. I have over 400 students this semester, so that's the main reason behind the policy is because I, I just don't have the time. If I, oh, if I make it officially stated that I accept late assignments, I'm just going to be flooded because it's, 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 uh, would be anything I'd be, the only thing I'd be doing basically is trying to work on that. So I, I hope you understand. So anyway, let's talk about the next, next exam coming up because you're probably most concerned about this. So let's, um, go over here and go to assignments. This is, you know, that's just instructor panel. So if I go to assignments, you're gonna see you did exam one and I did place a curve on exam one and I curved everybody's score up, which you probably noticed. Uh, now exam two, it's right now it's hidden from you. So you won't see exam two. When will you see exam two? Wednesday, March 25th. As always, as stated in uh, the announcements, um, the exam is on Wednesday, March 25th, at between 7 and 9.50 p.m. So this is a good advantage to you because I'm going to give you two, oh, almost three hours, two hours and 50 minutes to complete this exam. You'll most likely get it done with an hour and a half, just like last time. And the exam is going to cover chapters 3, 4, 12, and 16. And the exam is going to be the same format as last time, multiple choice. So you will click on when it, it will become available at 7 p.m. on March 25th. So when you click on exam two, just like before, you're going to click begin. And then you're going to complete the exam online. And simple as that. So there's nothing to worry about. It's the same multiple choice format as last time, 50 questions, and it's worth 10 points just like last time. So this shouldn't be a problem because we've already taken the first test online. Well, sort of, we were in the classroom. And now you get to use, treat it as an um, open book test so you can look at the textbook and, um, you know, so that will make this exam easier than the first exam. Now, Attendance, of course, is basically you're getting those points now because there is no uh, more physical attendance, so those points you'll get back. Now, the stock trading simulation, we are still trading, if you know. So now with the stock market being so turbulent, it's so interesting. It's such a good semester to teach investments because of 
the stock market. Like even today, the market's down almost 800 points after going like, you know, let's just review the week. Monday, the market goes down 2000 points. Wow. Biggest drop I've ever seen. Tuesday, the market goes up a thousand points. Wow. Hooray. Today, the market goes down 784 points. I've lost so much money in the Webull um, trading app that uh, it's scary. So, uh, but we're still doing a trading simulation. I still want you to make two trades per week. And if you miss a couple of trades in, in um, you don't have to trade during spring break. And if you missed a couple of trades, um, that's fine. Because remember, you com- you're still want to compete in this because at the end of this, at the end of the, at the end of this, uh, you're gonna. There's extra credit of three, two, and one points available. So you don't want to give that up. So you want to trade. And I mean, this assignment's two points. So uh, you you don't want to lose those two points either. So keep trading, uh, and hopefully you get one of the top three positions. And remember, not only do you get um, these extra credit points, you also get uh, cash gifts from Webull uh, at the end of the simulation. Uh, either I think it's a combination of stock and cash cash gifts. I'm not exactly sure how it works. It's the first semester we're doing this. Okay, so let's move on from from that. But look at the market today. Wow, this is just crazy. Um, down almost 800 points, and a lot of stocks here are just. Look at Chipotle, oh, Chipotle Mexican Grill 681. I'd like to buy Chipotle Mexican Grill, but. I'm thinking more like 500. I'm a little greedy though. It may not get that low. Um, because, you know, Chipotle Mexican Grill, what's happening with that? Well, they're worried that people are going to keep a social distance and not want to eat there. So we'll see what happens. So the two twin forces of the market here are, of course, you know, the. Uh, the, the Cove 19, which we know about because that's why we're online, and also the oil situation when the oil market's crashing. So this is putting people in a real downer mood. And um, this is, I'll probably watch this later, Warren Buffett on market volatility. He also has interesting things to say. Um, and let's see, the cryptocurrencies, Bitcoin is down too. I, I thought that might go up in the market like this. Trending uh, tickers today. Interesting pharmaceuticals, of course, pharmaceuticals tied to this. Like, look at this one, up 172 point uh, percent today. That's just amazing. Uh, gain area. So we have these mostly buy buy uh, pharmaceuticals going up today, and then losers today. Uh, energy stocks, of course. So interesting in the market, good time to trade. I like Yahoo Finance because I can get like crude oil and gold, silver currency. And of course, you know, this has been updated. This has been like seven. Okay, there we go. It's getting closer to uh, 900, super scary. Let's go back to our class. Let's get away from the market for, it's just too depressing today <laughs> to keep talking about that. But interesting times to trade and learn about investments. And remember, you, you really have to read the textbook. Number one, read that textbook for the chapters we're covering because it's going to help with the concepts, the paper, everything we're doing. So don't be shy. You have time. You don't have to commute to campus anymore. Read that chapter. Read those chapters I'm assigning. Um, Watch the videos of the lectures, which um, those are interesting too, and those are a good complementation to the textbook. And of course, do the homework assignments. So we have some assignments that have been completed already. So the team assignment where you, you made your industry um, has been assigned homework one, uh, the stock data analysis, uh, the database, Teams did an excellent job on this. I recently graded this and I was really happy with everyone's effort. Now this is this this stock database is where you're gonna get the data, some of the data to write the report that's coming up, which I'm gonna talk about. That's the second thing I wanna talk about today is this uh, assignment coming up. So homework two is done and 
here we go. I do uh, have, we have homework three coming up, which is March 29th. So that's the week we come back from spring break. I suggest working on it now. Uh, it's a good, it's a good way to get, I mean, these are the two most important chapters, I think, in the book, chapter 15 and 16. So I think that, you know, these two homeworks are pretty crucial um, to look at. Okay, moving on. And remember, computational problems, spreadsheet problems, and questions, they may hold, they may be some of the same numbers, but they are, you have to look first. Is it a question, a computation problem, or a spreadsheet exercise? So just make sure you don't work on the wrong problems. Although I'm pretty lenient when I grade the homework, uh, just looking for a decent effort. Uh, I'm not looking for 100%. You don't have to be 100% correct to get a full score on the homework. So, okay, here we go. This is what we, we got left. We got the, the first stock industry analysis team paper. I'm going to talk about that more significantly in a minute. We have homework four. Then we have the second stock analysis team paper in the end of February. Then we have homework five. That's the last of the homeworks, I believe. Um, we, and then we have this, the industry spreadsheet and the presentation. What I'm going to tell you about the presentation will make you very happy. Um, you no longer have to do the team presentation based on the current situation. So I'm giving everybody the six points for the team presentation. So that's one assignment you, that you don't have to do anymore. Because based on the logistics of things, this isn't going to be something easily for a team to accomplish. And I don't want to for, force people to have to meet face to face in this situation. So everybody gets those points for the presentation automatically. The industry stock spreadsheet. Um, so here, this can be done. Does at, you know this isn't due until the end of the very end of April here. And what we what we're going to do here is I wanted I wanted you to keep track of the stock prices for each company in your industry. Uh, so I wanted you to keep a weekly performance summary, uh, including total return, uh, and create a, a stock price chart for each stock in your industry. So this spreadsheet, it's not as, don't don't worry so much about it. It's really not that hard. You just go to Yahoo Finance, you put in the stock, we'll do Chipotle Mexican Grill, you know, uh, and then you could go to historical data here and historical prices and we can set this to weekly and then we can put in the date range. So uh, you want to do this, we'll do, you know, start at the beginning of the year maybe. And then go to um, the the you know third week or fourth week of April. Hit done. Hit apply. And now you have your and what we want is the closing price. So you have the closing price by week um, for this time period. Uh, and then you can actually click download data. Download that data. And hold on, let me just pause this. Here's the data downloaded, so I, I can go and I can just delete those columns. I'm going to delete that column. Okay, so now I could just easily, so here's the closing data, and let's put that currency. Okay, so now I could just easily make a chart. And this is based on 2019, you're going to do 2020. So I can just make a chart. And let's make a line graph. All right. Uh, that is a problem there. All right. So th this is, I don't know why it's coming up percentage, but. Let's just make this date. Okay, that's better. <laughs> so here, I can easily make a chart and we could see, uh, oh, for 2019, we could see the price uh, and then that's it. So it's, it's really kind of that simple. You could even do a combo chart for volume and price. 
if you know how to make a combo chart. And we could do all of 20. Actually, we do, oops. Let's do it to present day. You don't have to go back this far. I'm not, you can if you want to, you know, so I don't want you to be worried about this assignment because I'm showing you, I would have done this in class. That's why I'm showing you now. All right. So here is the, um, look at this chart here. So let's retitle this Chihuahua Mexican Grill. So if we look at this chart, interesting, right? So we have, we started out the year uh, around, oh, you know, I captured the, I don't want the volume. All right, that's better. So here is the, the stock price. We started around 500 in 20, to January, 2019. We went up to, uh, over 800 and suddenly back down to under 600. So see, not a big deal to get this information, but I just wanted you to write, make this, this could be a nice supplement. If you do this, you don't have to wait to the, um, you could even start doing some analysis like this for your stock analysis report, because when you look at the charts now, remember we were talking about technical analysis last week. Here's Chipotle Mexican Grill's chart. If we, in, if we, uh, I'm going to add to it indicator, moving average. So let's do the, um, I'm going to do the 50 day moving average. And then I'm going to add the 100 day. Uh, I want it to be a different color. I'll make that green. And then I'll also add 200 to make this red. That's not red. This is red. Okay. Okay. So we see here we got the triple witching. It went below the 50 day. So once the stock goes below the 50 day, uh, well, let's start all the way back here. The stock bounces off of its support. The 200 day is usually the support. Bounces off the support and then penetrates the... Um, the 50 day and the 100 day. So that would have been the, my buy signal right here. And that would have been pretty good. See how well that worked? Once it went past the 50 day and the 100 day, that's when I would sell the stock. And now that it's gone past the 200 day, um, I could see that, you know, the stocks technically should keep going down. So this is how we use technical analysis. And this is something that you could talk about on your stock analysis report when you have a technical analysis situation you can make a cop make a chart in, in yahoo finance and put in some uh of these moving averages i also like to add um rsi so i'm going to do the over 20 period and just keep it at that same period so the rsi here is something i like to do as well and we see here that uh it was over over here it was at 80 you can't see it because it's kind of really tiny, but this is 80 saying overbought. So if you sold at 80 and purchased down here, uh, you would have made a nice return. So the RSI is basically what the RSI is, Relative Strength Index, talked about in the textbook and the lecture. And what this is basically shows you how overpurchased or oversold the stock is. And the saying goes, if it reaches 80, you, you buy, you sell. If it reaches 20, you buy. So RSI is another technical indicator. So this, this is a great little area for you to add indicators like Bollinger Bands are another indicator where they statistically using standard deviation put the stock in these bands. And whenever the stock gets to the top of the band, it says you said you should sell. When it gets to the bottom of the band, you should buy. So you could have bought, this is really, you know, here when it's outside the band is statistically very unlikely. But whenever it gets at the bottom of the band, you should buy and then you sell when it touches the top of the band. But the band is so wide now because of the volatility. Uh, it's a good measure of volatility too. So these are all things that, you know, this making the spreadsheet is supposed to help uh, just tie you into the price changes of the stock, which is a good thing to have in your report anyway. So that's just to go over that. Okay, so let's go back up. The other thing we really need to talk about is this paper. So you have two stock analysis papers to write. The first one, you can choose 
any stock in, in your industry that you've put together in your database. It could be any stock you like. Hopefully you want to work on stocks that you uh, are the most dramatic, probably the, the best, the strongest buy stock or maybe the strongest sell stock. So once you identified the stock that you want to write, you want to write about, you need to probably utilize these two resources here. So the stock, the student example stock report, if we click on here. So this is um, a standard research format uh, used by the CFA in our research challenge. So this, uh, so this is an example report. So I don't want to do the example report. I want to do um, the template. So here's a template that we're going to look at. Oh, so here's a stock template. And let's make this a little bigger. Okay. So this is just saying that, you know, an uh, example format that you could use where in the first page, you want to give me the company name, the price target, you're recommending a price target, the ticker symbol or stock price. You know, maybe a little chart a table here of the, the earnings per share for the last uh, four quarters for the last four years, not 2007 to 2010. Sometimes with these assignments, you got to use your common sense. If you see old dates there, everything should sort of be updated to 2020 or 2019, depending. Uh, okay, so news and headlines that you want to go out to probably Yahoo Finance again, and they'll give you news and headlines on the stock. So here again, you're going to, uh, I'm not worried about, for this paper, I'm not worried about, um, if you do a news or headline, uh, you could just cite the source of it. You don't have to include a reference of bibliography for this class. So you could just, what's happening with the stock? So the four latest headlines or most important headlines about news about the company you think is important to include. Then a little chart on the stock price. It just shows you how to do that. And a little market portfolio uh, uh, profile of some common key statistics of the stock. Um, whatever, whatever you have in the database. If these things don't have to be updated. So once you make your stock database, you could work from there. So don't feel like you have to update it until you know, the day you're doing the stock report, all this information. You could use the stock price that you, you pulled in from a couple weeks ago. We're not, you know, this isn't a report that's going to be published for professional scrutiny, okay? Then you're going to write up the business description. What does this company do? So again, if we go to um, Yahoo Finance, all right, so go back to summary. So here on summary, if you go to profile, it's going to give you um, a description of the business. Now, I don't want you to cut and paste from Yahoo here. I want you to maybe read this, think about what you know about the company and put together your own original business description, but you can get the information from it, you know, right here in Yahoo Finance has good, as well as, you know, the financials are here too. Uh, so there's a lot in Yahoo Finance, as well as stock row that we store in the class and things like that. So you, just, you have a lot of sources for this. So write a, a business description and then an overview of the industry and the competitive positioning. So this would be more of um, the industry. So in, when you write the industry overview, and what's nice is some of these things like this industry overview, once you write it, you can use it for both papers. And this is going to be, tell me about the stocks in your industry that you picked, the 10 or so, 7 or 10, depending on the size of your team. What stocks have you picked? Tell me about the industry. What forces... Um, give me an overview of the industry's position, the stock's position with the industry, are they the industry leader, are they a newcomer, what's the economic forces, which is good to talk about during these times, how does recession or, or health virus scares affect the business, government regulations, changing demographics. Um, these are all good things to talk about here to give the, um, the reader an idea of what what makes this industry work? What's the basics of this industry? So, okay. And you could, once you write this, you could reuse it for the second paper. So the second paper is actually easier to write because some of these things could be reused. Now you're going to start with the investment summary. So you're going to write a paragraph uh, on your overall impressions of the stock and its future opportunities uh, and invest, investment potential, both short term and long term. And we want, I want you to include a valuation estimating what the future stock price is. So in the textbook, they have some simple valuation models, whether it's, you know, um, 
the forward PE model. So I'm not looking for quantitative finance here. I'm just looking for very simple valuation models. You can use any of them that were introduced into the textbook or anything that you find online. So you don't have to have anything complex mathematically, just some, some overall mathematical way of calculating what you think the future valuation should be. Um, okay, so that would be your investment summary. And then, so in under the investment summary, so this is like the main headline. Uh, you So you can include the future valuation here, but then in the valuation section, you're going to support your price target. What's your valuation model? Do you use discounted cash flow, forward PE? So see the textbook and write supporting arguments of why you think this is good uh, valuation model for your recommendation. All right. And then you can talk about risks to your price target. What could greatly affect your price target? You could talk about the oil market. You could talk about what's going on in the economy today that's likely to affect the company's price target. Also talk about competitors. So here we're just gonna state the risks. And you, know, you can go online and find out a lot of this information, but I don't want you to cut and paste because this is gonna be put through a, um, a plagiarism scanner. So don't cut and paste from the internet. You could look up and research information from the internet and then rewrite it in your own words. Uh, that's what I'm looking for. So, uh, and if you do cut and paste anything from the internet, you need to put quotations around it and then cite the source at the end of the quotation. So I know where you're getting it from. Okay, fundamental analysis. Okay, now we get into chapter 15, fundamental analysis. So here from your stock analysis database, um, you're going, which you already did, the hard part, you collected all the data. Now you're gonna put in, put in a table or chart of the financial ratios for the company, and then talk about you know, the earnings, the um, liquidity ratios, the asset ratios, the debt ratios, profitability, market share ratios. So things that you should include, all these ratios should be included. And this is from the spreadsheet. Now in the book, it tells you how to calculate capital asset pricing model, which is K or required rate of return. So the capital asset pricing model is a required rate of return. And you could use uh, 4.5 and 10% as your risk-free rate and your market return when you calculate that. And again, that formula is in the textbook. So yeah, so you're gonna list, uh, but you're gonna not, not importantly just only list these, this information into some sort of table, uh, you're going to talk about each and every one of these and how does it relate between your company and the industry and how does it support your valuation. Next, you're going to move into technical analysis. So here I have some technical indicators. You don't have to have everything here, but I want you to talk about a majority of these things. So if you go to Yahoo Finance, uh, as well as other sources too, and you go to statistics, a lot of these technical indicators like moving averages, volume, share prices, percentage of insiders, short ratio, percentage of float, a lot of these technical indicators are in here. A beta, of course, and then um, I wonder if RSI is in here somewhere. It used to be listed in a... RSI you can see on the chart. You don't have to um, get the actual number in here, but just a good, a good site to get some of these technical indicators. And again, I want you to list what the technical indicator is, how does that relate to the industry's average, and how does that um, support your uh, recommendation? So if your recommendation is buy or strong buy, you, you know, these technical indicators should support that. Um, and that's what you're trying to do is you want to put all these indicators and these ratios together and say, is this a story that says buy or is this a story that says sell? And that's what you're supporting when you write the document. Okay. So then um, you can talk about investment risks. Again, this is more um, earlier when we were talking about the risk of the company. Here's more, I think, more macro. So think of these two risk sections, as I mentioned before. I might have mentioned some macro things, but... Think of the first section as a micro, just really company specific risks. And then this would be more macro. And you could restate some stuff you said above, but just again, the investment risks, which here I wrote a C textbook, industry risk, credit risk, exchange rate risk, market risk, political risk. Some, these are some things to talk about. And a good place to get some of these risks is if you get to go to the annual report 
of the company. And the annual report will have a management who will talk about the risks where you can get a lot of this information in. All right. And then here you could give, you can give me the latest, you can cut and paste in here the latest income statement, balance sheet, cash flow. So these could be right from your database. So it could be a year over year chart. This is why I had you make that, put that in here as well. And um, now your industry spreadsheet, you can put in here too, size it small, uh, put it as a PDF or, um, when you saw the example of that, okay. So what else? So that, and down here could be whatever notes or references that you might want to include. And that's the whole paper. So it's, it's really a fun, interesting, exciting assignment to read. So the hard part is, how are you going to put this together as a team? So as a team, you got to figure out, okay, who's going to be doing what? Who's going to be writing what? And that's why I left you, I also uh, left you an example. So let's go back. Here's the example where, uh, and this might be a little tricky. A hard part of this might be actually finding the right platform to compose the paper. Word can work. It is a little tricky, but there are other things like Publisher and there are other platforms you can use to make a more uh, visually organized paper. So you figure out your team, how, what media you want to write this in. And then again, this is just an example of what the paper should look like. And a good format is have your charts and graphs over here the kind of support or give additional visual information. And then you can talk about the company, recent news, here's a chart. So this is a good example of the paper. And this is a paper written by Stony Brook undergraduate students. Now you're a graduate student. So if undergraduate students can do a paper like this, I'm sure this is like the best example though. This is like the cream of the crop. So out of like hundreds of submissions, this is the best one. So, you know, this would be, of course, an A plus paper. Uh, although my standards for this class, I'm not really gonna hold you to having to achieve a paper of this level, but this is certainly a great, you know, format to look at of how this was uh, put together. And this is actually a little extensive here in some, some areas. But remember, things are gonna be reusable between this paper and the second paper. Uh, and they, uh, let's see. Okay, so the investment summary, they did a discounted cash flow. Um, all right. See, so I don't want you to copy this paper. Don't feel like you have to include everything that they included in this paper because they use some more advanced uh, valuation methods that we're not using in this class. So don't worry about your valuation method. They did multiple valuation methods. You only have to do one and it can be very simple. So this is a good example of how they did, you know, they did comparable, they did a uh, discount, discash, discounted dividend model, which probably for most industries would not work because this was for uh, yeah, energy and industry. They did a, a company analysis, a comparable company analysis of, um, say, PE to in earnings and then this company risks. So, and then their appendices here, share price. And here's like an example of them putting some tables in here. Your tables aren't going to look as complex as this, but so I just want to start you out with, I don't believe me, I don't expect you to make a paper of this high quality, but I want you to get somewhere between the template and this, somewhere between where you have most of my questions answered pretty thoroughly and you have some nice charts and graphs to what you're to, to support your recommendation. So what I don't like, what you'd get a bad grade if you say, give me a buy recommendation, and then your paper is a whole bunch of negative uh, down information about how this stock is really not a buy. And we're looking for a recommendation for you know 12 months out. So not next month, not next week, you know, not in three months. We're looking what's your what do you think the stock price will be in a year, you know. So that's your goal here. Okay, back to the assignments. So that will be your first stock paper. So you submit that, which is due April 7th. Um, give me a week or so. I'm gonna grade that with feedback, areas where you can improve uh, and give you some you know, generalized feedback on that. And then in a couple more weeks, you're gonna write the second paper. So you'll have about you know, two weeks to write that second paper. And again, in that second paper, it's the same assignment as the first paper, but now you're going to use some of the feedback I gave you to hopefully improve some of your weak areas and make a better paper the second time around. And you're going to choose a different stock for the second paper. Okay, 
So I think that pretty much explains the rest of the class as far as the assignments. Now, I will send out periodic emails um, reminding you of the assignments. And remember, if you click here for class videos, this is where there are going to be videos where I'm going to, um, and you want to smash the subscribe button so that way when I put new videos up uh, that you're going to get notification that new videos are up or will come in your feed. I think there's a bell somewhere too, I don't know where it is, but this is where I kind of organize the videos by chapter that we're going over in the class. And this is where if I have, you know, I'll probably post updates to the class and talk about things um, periodically throughout the rest of the class through these videos. So just keep in mind that you wanna be subscribed to that and you wanna, you know, watch those videos. Now I realize some of the information in the videos might be a little um, talking about, I recorded them a, a couple years ago. I mean, the main content is all identical, but some of the references may be a little bit older, so don't don't, don't mind that. But um, I will record uh, new videos to talk about the market, to talk about some of the assignments and, and, and how the class is going uh, moving forward. And this class may evolve. Um, I might use some other technologies later on, where I'm waiting for the school is promising some additional technologies. I'll talk more about that later, but I think you get the, the general gist. This class is already half online. It was a hybrid class. So um, I got the sense that on the hybrid week, people really weren't putting too much effort in. But now that it's fully online, you have to keep uh, your effort level up consistently through the rest of the course to get these remaining assignments done. And you also have to develop some sort of tactic or strategy to work online with the other team members. And remember in your group area, when you go to your group area, you do have tools in your group area where, so if you go to tools here, I go down, there's something called groups, which you know, and this is gonna look weird because it's the instructor view. When, but when you go into your group here, you're gonna have your email, so you can email your group members you have your discussion board, so you can create a discussion board um, if you need to. You have your file exchange. So you have some, um, the discussion board is good if you wanna leave each other notes or messages, but you don't, I don't, I'm not forcing you to use that. And you have your remaining si assignments here, which just the portfolio presentation you no longer have to do. So you have three remaining team assignments. So you gotta figure out, uh, organize how this is gonna work for your team online. So there are tools, you know, there are plenty of tools where chat, uh, where you could chat together online or you could Skype together online or, so you can figure out, basically you gotta figure out who's doing what. And so I would suggest having one team member be what would be called an editor. So they'll be the one, uh, you know, collecting the, maybe assigning and collecting the work from each team member and putting it together and submitting it to me online. So you wanna figure out what's best to organize your team and remember, um, uh, you don't ever have to meet in person with your team, but if your team still wants to meet in person, you can, uh, or you could do it fully online. So you can use things like, um, you can get a free account with the Zoom um, conferencing, and you can conference through Zoom and talk to each other, or you can uh, conference on Skype, uh, things like this. So, so you have options. So I just want to kind of let you know that this team area is where you can kind of contact your other team members and, and things like that. Okay, so that's, that's it for this video. And I hope this helps explains where we are in the class. And I'm very sorry we're not meeting tonight or for the rest of the semester, but I think it's for the best to, to follow. Um, I mean, I gotta follow what the school tells me to do, which is to bring the classes online and keep everyone safe and healthy. So um, let's see, I think this will work out just fine. And I think, um, if anything, the you guys are a, a highly um, motivated group of intelligent individuals. So I'm sure that you're, you'll be able, if you put your side of the effort in, because I'm going to put, you know, you'll be able to get the same amount out of this class as you would in person. So, okay, take care.